Should you buy Godfall in 2024? Godfall was initially released at the end of 2020 for both PS5 and PC, and it came out to very mixed reception. Many negative reviews of Godfall pointed to Godfall's dull world building and story, and a repetitive mission structure that couldn't keep you occupied for more than a few hours, compared to other live service looter shooters, for example Destiny 2. I was able to pick the game up for just $7, being that of the Ultimate Edition, and I'll be discussing whether the game is worth it for you by analyzing several components of the game without any spoilers of course. This section of the video will be extremely brief as I can agree with critics on this front. The story of God 4 is quite dull and uninteresting by all accounts. The game's characters foremost have no personality at all and even the game's main character has no sense of character development or emotional moments throughout the entirety of the game. Not to mention the fact the villain of the game is the most cliche and generic villain you'll see in a video game with no personality of his own and is pretty much a generic character that you'd see in any other film or game. There are some side characters that you'll see constantly throughout the game but even they have no personality even when compared to the villain or the main character of the story which is really disappointing. The game's very dull cast of characters isn't also helped by the fact that the game is set in very cliche locations in elemental realms such as the water realm or the air realm and these generic locations make an even more generic plotline more boring and these locations have no character of their own. I thought maybe because the story of God for itself in terms of writing and world building would be quite dull that other factors of the game might be better in that department such as environmental storytelling but none of the places or environments in God for tell a story of their own. The fact that these locations have just gone through a war isn't presented through the locations themselves as all the buildings are intact and everything looks beautiful and fine. There is no war torn locations as would be suggested by the game's main story and the main plot line. The story story of the game also isn't helped at all by the fact that the mission structure is the same thing over and over again, with no real variety to boss fights or enemy encounters or even the objectives you have. For example, every main mission in the game will see you just slaughtering enemies and then for example turning something on or going off to disable something. There's no true variety in these missions and Godfall's variety in both side missions and main missions is extremely lackluster by all accounts. Overall, Godfall's story is nothing to boast about and is quite horrible for what it is and isn't the reason I kept playing through the game. Although many initial reviews of God 4 pointed out the flaws in God 4's combat system, I had a lot of fun with it and it's what kept me going for the 12 hours I played the game. There's not a whole lot to the gameplay of God 4 other than its combat which is what should hook you if you are interested in the game. The Steam page of the game discusses the fact that the game has something called Valor Plates which are essentially 12 different armor sets you can craft throughout the game. It is also claimed that these are completely unique to one another with each one of them having their own unique playstyle throughout the game. From my own personal experience with these different Valor plates this wasn't exactly true as although some of these armor sets have their own ultimate ability known as Archon Furies they weren't exactly diversified too much from one another and didn't really change the playstyle all too much. Honestly you'll only be using the armor set that is most appealing to you in looks which is the reason I stuck to the same armor set throughout the entire game as it's just what looked best to me personally. However, what does offer unique playstyles in the game is the game's well-crafted weapon classes, of which there are five of. This ranges from war hammers to great swords to even dual blades. They each have their own abilities known as techniques that you can use, and this made combat a lot more diversified in the game as I would switch between weapons constantly to provide myself a different style of play. This weapon variety in the game is what really enhances the combat in the game and is the main reason the combat is so appealing. The game's combat really does shine best in its flashiness and the different styles provided by these weapon classes. When you're doing the same thing over and over again in combat encounters just wiping out enemies, flashy animations, finishes and weapon attacks spice up the combat to great degrees and really kept me going through the game. Instead of just finding one overpowered weapon from the very start of the game and sticking to it, the loot was good enough throughout the game's runtime for me to continue switching between weapons which always kept encounters fresh and interesting interesting until the very end of the story and the little side missions I did to level up throughout the game. But what supplements the combat further in the game is the game's enemy variety which is surprisingly pretty decent and as you play through the game you'll encounter different types of enemies that can't be spam attack like others. This may mean you need to use parries, dodge at more precise times or even switch your weapon class to get an advantage over your enemies. This is one aspect that Godfall does shine in and in the upcoming section about the game's DLC components 
weapons. Enemy variety is even further expanded, making combat in God 4 not as boring as you think even though you're doing the same thing over and over again. Despite that, as mentioned earlier, the mission structure in God 4 is so dull and repetitive. There wasn't a single time I didn't just have to activate something by wiping out enemies or go help someone by killing even more enemies. There's no real diversity in every mission and it's the same thing over and over again whether you're doing the main missions in the game or even the side missions. Of course, as a game boasting its loot systems, that's primarily what you're going to be doing throughout God 4. You're going to be gathering a lot of loot by playing the game and going on different missions from weapons to rings to even banners. The gameplay mechanics revolve around this looting system and so if you're not a fan of all these types of different gear systems and creating the perfect build as it's known, God 4 isn't for you in any capacity. I usually don't like these types of games but God 4's combat is engaging enough to keep me hooked to continue playing even though I'm not a big fan of creating the perfect build and gathering as much loot as possible. Although the difficulty was a problem throughout the entirety of the game for me personally and I kept dying to bosses over and over again and I think that might be overcome by the fact that you need to start looting more and doing different side missions to gather more loot opposed to just doing the main missions as I did. Overall God 4's gameplay may have a lot of faults specifically in its repetitive mission structure and continuous enemy encounters with no real variety at all but its combat is very fun and is quite diversified with the flashiness of it all creating a gameplay system that is quite engaging and fun throughout the entire journey I had with the game in its 12 hours runtime. These next two sections of the video will be quite short as there isn't too much to discuss. God Falls Ultimate Edition which I bought for $7 gives you the Fire and Darkness DLC giving you access to new end game content, locations and the all new and gorgeous Fire Realm. The DLC also has its own 3 hour story which was surprisingly better than the main story of the game with more emotion poured into the characters and the plot overall. First off the Fire Realm is absolutely gorgeous and the landscapes you traverse in the DLC are well worth the price in addition to the new loot and content you are provided with. The DLC also adds a bunch of new boss encounters and different types of enemies as mentioned earlier providing you with even more tailored content to engage with after you complete the contents of the game's main story. Also if you're generally interested in the end game content of God 4 you have to buy the DLC as the end game content within the DLC is plentiful as well providing more to do after you play the game's handmade content. Overall I had more fun with the DLC in many aspects in the game's main story and the main components of the base game and a lot of this DLC improves over the base game so I highly recommend you buy and play through the DLC if you're enjoying yourself with the game and want to experience even more tailored content within God Falls world. To be completely honest in this section I don't have much to say in this matter about the game's end game content as I personally didn't engage with it very much as I'm not really a fan of games with the whole sentiment of when you finish the game you've actually just begun. But God Falls definitely does look like it's got enough content to provide you with at least another 30 hours of gameplay if you're into making the perfect build and continuously doing the same boss encounters over and over again which is highly diversified by buying the DLC content of the game. There are different realms with different objectives that you can engage with for example the fire realm, the water realm and the air realm so you don't get super bored doing the same mission objective over and over again in the same realm. There's also the tower of trials which is essentially a wave based mode in which you can take down hordes of enemies and gather the best loot you can. For me personally this is probably what I would do if I were to play the end game content of God 4 as doing these modes are more diversified than some of the same mission objectives you'll be doing over and over again in the realms and you can gather the best loot you can through doing these tower of trials. So if you are interested in this type of content in your games it does definitely seem like God 4 will provide you with some more content to engage with even after you complete the contents of the main story and the DLC and so you'll be able to continue slashing down enemies long after the credits roll. My verdict on God 4 is that you should purchase the game if you're into hack and slash combat and these types of looter shooter games and if you can find the game for under $20. I don't know how I'd feel paying more than that for this game but for under $20 or even $7 like I got it for, God 4's got enough to engage you for at least a few hours and I recommend you purchase it at such a price if you enjoy these types of games. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subbing to the channel and dropping a like, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.